Hi, Stefan Kesting from grapplearts.com here. Over the last couple of years in competitive Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, there's a technique that's come to the forefront, the Berimbolo, and that's my pronunciation of it. It's probably pronounced differently in Brazil, but I'm not Brazilian. Now, the Berimbolo gets used at the super lightweights and starting to get used at the heavyweights, and you either use it or you have to be aware of it if you want to compete at a high level. Now, the best way to learn to defend something is to learn how to do it first. That way you become aware of it. When you see the other person getting the grips or for any attack, you're like, oh my god, I, I recognize this because this is what I do when I'm using it. So, even if you hate it, you should still learn it so you don't get caught by it. Trouble is, it's a complicated move. There's legs and arms flying all over the place, just spinning upside down. So I think what I've got is the simplest way for you to learn the Barambolo and it's an easy three-step process, but we're gonna start out with two drills. And if you can't do these drills, well, then really uh, you should work on them until you can do them, then you can do the easy three-step technique. So the first technique, or the first drill rather, you're gonna start out against the wall. You're gonna be here, your knees at 90 degrees, your hips at 90 degrees, and what you're gonna do is you're going to tuck your head towards the wall. You are not rolling like this. This is not the drill. The drill is my head comes towards the wall and I flip upside down and then I spin through. I, to go the other way, I'm gonna take my elbow, tuck it under my body, spin upside down and come through. So, like I said, you're not rolling on your belly, you're bringing your head towards the object on which you have your feet. That's the first drill. If you can't do that, you gotta work on your flexibility, you gotta work on your coordination. Once you have that, we can do the second drill. For the next drill, you need a stability ball, you can also use a medicine ball, and you're gonna do the same thing that we did on the wall, just with a less stable surface or a less stable point of purchase. You're going to start with one foot across the ball here and the other foot on top. This mimics the foot position that you're gonna have while you're doing the Barambola. Now, I'm gonna to spin towards this leg. To do that, it becomes a lot easier if this foot goes on the mat. So we're gonna start out here, foot goes on the mat, I'm going to invert and then roll through. You're gonna roll away from the ball a bit, that's okay. It's the inversion that's the difficult part and the important part. So one foot here, one foot here. When you're ready to go, foot goes on the mat, invert, and spin through. Do that a few times, now we're ready to start training with a partner. So you can break it down into three general steps. Now there's a ton of nuances, there's a ton of variations, there's a ton of advanced details, and we're not going to be doing them, because it's pointless to worry about whether you're gripping here, or here, or there, until you have the gross motion, right? This, it's like trying to coach, uh, it's like a track coach trying to work with a kid who can't yet walk. We're just trying to get to the walking stage. Once you have the gross motion, then you can go and you can go study how, you know, the Mendez brothers do it, the Miao brothers do it, Keenan Cornelius do it, how all these other elite guys do it. And then you can start personalizing it and coming up with your own variations. We're just talking about the gross motor picture here. And we're going to start from a double guard pull position. Now, Yes, you can do this if you both pull guard at the same time, which is not something I advocate. But you can also end up in a similar position after some sweeps, and then it's just the easiest way to learn it. So learn it from here, and then worry about doing it from Delaheva guard, worry open guard, as a counter to a foot lock, and all these other amazing uh, variations that people are coming up with for this move. Learn it from the double guard pull position, or just think of it as a drilling position if you really can't stomach the idea of a double guard pull. So, Richie and I are going to be facing each other. We're here. We're playing foot patty cake. I'm going to take my foot and bring it on the outside of Richie's leg. Then I'm going to insert it here. It's a Delaheva hook. Turn a bit, please, Richie. We're here. This foot comes on the inside. That Delaheva hook gives you the purchase that you need to spin under your opponent. So, I'm going to grab his heel, Delaheva hook. 
The easiest grip here is the belt. So I'm going to have the belt, the foot, and my Delaheva hook. That's the first step, just getting this initial setup position. So here, one, two, three, four. Now you're good to go to step two, which is the inversion. This is maybe, this is what we were drilling on the wall and on the ball. We're here, and I'm going to pull my head towards Richie's hip. We're here, and I'm going to spin upside down. We're here, and I'm going to spin upside down. Just like on the wall, and the most common mistake here, people trying to do it like this. They get the initial position, and they try and do this. Or they try and go up on their head. No, you want to roll across your shoulders. You want to bring your head close to his body. While you're doing that, your other foot comes onto his belly. We're here and here. So that's step number two. We got the grips. We got the, uh, the inversion. Now, this is where a lot of the variations come in, depending on what the guy's reaction is, if he pushes you with his foot, if he does this, if he does that. Um, we're just gonna do the simplest, which is to basically kick him over onto all fours and then work to take his back. That's the basic threat that drives the rest of the move for, uh, for all the variations. So, grip. Foot on the outside, grab the heel, Delaheva hook, this hand, grabs the belt. Good, whew, step one done. Step two done, I'm going to go upside down to here. Now, you see that <laughs> when you're here, I'm holding this leg. I'm going to switch to the other leg and I'm going to kick him over. So step three is a grip switch and kick. I'm going to pull my leg out and kind of clamp Richie's thigh. And now, depending on how our bodies are, I can either jump for the seatbelt or I can climb for the seatbelt and take the back. Let's show that from a different angle. Step one, foot outside, grab the heel, Delaheva hook, grab the belt. Step two, I invert. After I invert, I'm going to switch my grip and basically lever him over with my own leg. So we're here, there. I switch my grip to this, from this leg to this leg, and I kick him over, kind of doing a push-pull there. That way he can't get away. I'm holding this leg and I'm driving it with my knee. Now if he's this far away, well maybe I can come up here and do this, or maybe I have to do a piecemeal and climb like that. Either way, I'm on the back. So, if you do those three steps, get your grips, invert, then switch your grip and kick, or switch your grip and lever, you end up in a very, very good position, ready to jump on the back. And uh, once you practice that a few times, then you can start looking at all the variations for the Barambola. I hope this, uh, I hope this helped you out.